Hi, this is Loic from the 3D Applications team. In this tutorial, you will be looking at how to use the new Digital Volume Correlation extension to the Aviso software. For convenience, we'll refer to Digital Volume Correlation as DVC. First, you will learn how to estimate the characteristic length of the microstructure, as well as the amount of deformation in a series of images prior to performing a DVC analysis. Then you will learn how to use the two approaches to DVC included in the Digital Volume Correlation module and how to visualize the results of the computation. The data in this tutorial is courtesy of the University of Portsmouth. We will start by loading bci underscore reference .am, which can be found in the folder data, tutorial, x volume correlation, and we we'll refer to it as reference. Start by creating an auto slice on the dataset if it was not created automatically and switch the orientation to YZ. The microstructure consists of trabecular bone in white and cement in grey. Before going on to performing the DVC calculation, the microstructure's characteristic length can be studied. For this, create a radial autocorrelation module on the reference and apply it. This will create a new table with the correlation values as a function of distance. You can plot this by creating a plot spreadsheet module, setting table 1 distance as x and table 1 autocorrelation as y. Now click Show. A graph will appear in a new window. The characteristic length of a microstructure can be defined as the distance for which an inflection point can be observed. Here we can define it at around 20 voxels. As a rule of thumb, the subvolume size for a DVC analysis should be 3 to 4 times greater. Now Load the second image of the time series, BCI Peak Force.am, to which we will refer as deformed. Create an auto slice on this and link its properties, namely orientation, slice number, and color map to the auto slice of the reference image. By turning the second auto slice on and off successively, we can observe the deformation that happened between the two images. In order to estimate the maximum displacement in this image, and because the images have been pre-aligned, we can just subtract one by the other using a subtract image module. Create it on the reference image and select the deformed image as input 2. Now click apply. View the resulting data set with an auto slice and go to slice 200 in the YZ orientation. Adjust the color map by clicking edit adjust range to data histogram. Parts with no deformation will appear in gray and large deformation will appear as black and white fringes. Now use the measure tool to have an estimate of the maximum thickness of either a black or a white fringe. Here we can measure up to about 12 voxels in the top right corner. You can now attach a digital volume correlation module to the reference image, set the deformed volume port to the deformed image, and the DVC approach to subset-based local. To have access to more options for fine-tuning the algorithm, activate the advanced to toggle switch, and then set the port enable display to on. Using the previous measurement of the characteristic length, we can set the subvolume size to 80 for initializing and adjust the maximum displacement to 12 voxels. You can now have a render of the subdivision into subvolumes. Keeping the metric to correlation and the correlation filter to 0.7 will result in any subvolume with a metric inferior to 0.7 to be ignored and interpolated instead. Finally, set the transform port to translation plus rotation and now run the algorithm by clicking apply. The algorithm will find iteratively the best six parameters of a rigid transformation matrix that produces the best match between grayscale intensities in the reference and deformed image. 
A metric of zero will mean no match, and a metric of one, a perfect match. Once completed, four new fields will be created. Firstly, a mesh representing the subsets, then a displacement field and a strain field, which respectively store a vector and a strain tensor at the center of each subset. Finally, a metric value is computed for each subset. Start by plotting a histogram of the metric map by creating a histogram module on the metric field. When clicking apply with default parameters, you will see a frequency plot of the metric map. We can see that all the metrics are superior to 0 0.95, which indicates a good correlation. The displacement field can be viewed by creating a vector field module, setting the coloring to data mapping and increasing the scale by clicking on the three dots to first increase the maximum value to 10, and you can now slide the scale up to 10. Additionally, the magnitude of the displacement field can be computed using the module magnitude, and the resulting data field can be selected in the color field port of the vector field and its color map set to physics. You can now visualize a 3D render of the metric value with a grid view, setting coloring to data mapping, opacity to 0 0.5 and value mapping to cell values. For data field resulting from the DC module, the color map used for visualization is adjusted in the color port of the data field itself. Here, select BCI reference metric, set the color map port to physics.am and adjust the range by clicking on edit adjust range to BCI underscore reference dot metric. Now that we have checked the quality of the displacement field computing using the local approach, it will now be used in order to initialize a final element-based DVC algorithm using a finer mesh, also known as a global approach. Turn off all but one auto slice by clicking right on the reference data set and click hide all but this. Start by creating a new digital volume correlation module on the reference image. Connect the default node just previously. We will now generate a tetrahedral grid using the mesh generation section. Set the cell size to 56 and activate enable display. You will now see the nodes of the mesh. Click generate mesh to create it and it will directly be linked in the reference mesh port. With the DVC approach port set to final element based, Set the maximum iteration port to 30 and keep the conversion criterion to 0.001. Finally, in the optional connection section, set the initial displacement port to the displacement field resulting from the previous local computation. Now click apply. Similarly to the local approach, this will create a displacement field and a strain tensor, but unlike it, it will also create a residual image instead of a metric map. In this global approach, the displacement field is obtained by minimizing correlation residuals, which corresponds to the difference between the reference image and the deformed image corrected by the computed displacement field. To check the quality of the correlation, create an auto slice on the residual image, BCI underscore reference dot res, and change the color map by clicking edit adjust range to data histogram. Good correlation zones will have values close to zero whereas weak correlation zones correspond to voxels with the lowest and highest intensities and are found at the top where the deformation is the highest. You can view the vector field just like previously. As for the strain field, components of the tensor field can be extracted. For this, create an arithmetic module on the strain field, set the output data type to scalar and the expression to AKK which corresponds to the strain components E33 along the z-axis, and click Apply. This will create a new scalar field. Set its color map to physics, rename it to E33, and create a grid view on it. Now set the draw style to solid outline. 
For more visualization option, please refer to the Digital Volume Correlation Analysis tutorial in the Aviso User Guide. As a summary, in this tutorial, you should have learned how to use the new DVC module and optimize its parameters, as well as check for the validity of the results and how to visualize the results of the computation. Goodbye, and thank you for viewing this tutorial.